Well, hello and welcome into Cooley Law School Stadium on a very special night. It is the 12th annual Crosstown Showdown presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Ready? Let's do it. It's an awesome event that really combines uh, the Michigan State community with the, the city of Lansing and uh, the two, obviously, baseball communities. Uh, it's a chance for us to play against the pro team, uh, which is a dream of all of our guys at some point to play pro baseball. And so it, it's, a, it's an opportunity for them to live out a, a piece of that dream and hopefully it's a preview for things to come for a lot of our guys. I think for us, the Crosstown Showdown really symbolizes a, a community celebration between Lansing and East Lansing and really kind of uh, you know, two great baseball teams and two great athletic programs here between uh, the Lansing Lug Nuts and Michigan State Spartans. So sort of just kind of a, a cool idea and has steadily grown into the, this annual showdown that we have every year. Really the only thing like this in, in all of Myrick Baseball and all of college athletics where you have a, a Myrick Baseball team playing a, a college baseball team in the same community. So um, very unique, very cool. From Michigan State, the center fielder, number three, Zaid Walker. Well, it's a lot of fun. The Lugnuts are, are very popular in Lansing. They're a, they're a great team. They're a single A baseball. It's, it's a huge attraction. But when you get a chance to, to step outside the league and play the Crosstown uh, major universities baseball team, it's just a lot of fun. You know, there are, there are people who love the Lugnuts because they're Lansing's Lugnuts, but there are just as many people that, that love Michigan State. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a crossover, right? It's, it's exciting because it's different for both of them. It draws sometimes different people. Uh, because you have people who are there who want to cheer on the lug nuts and you have people who are there who want to cheer on the Spartans and it's a it's a very fun friendly rivalry. I've got two older brothers. They were always golfing, so I just wanted to be with them all the time and so I I golfed and my dad golfs and my older brothers golf, so that was like the perfect foursomes really. Then when I was playing with my brothers, it was kind of me just trying to like hit it further than them, but they were so much older than me, it was never gonna happen. She just wanted to always be with a boy, so she did things a lot faster than probably most kids her age. And so in the summertime, she just wanted to always be with her brothers. And so, you know, they said, if you wanna be with us, then you have to play with us. And so they made her play from the white tees, and she was probably four or five years old. And yeah. Jimmy would go out and play with her on weekends. I'd say like I just went into like local tournaments around town, like I would play in those and I would win those and I'm like, oh, okay, like whatever. But um, then I started playing in bigger and bigger tournaments and when I, once I started doing better in those and like being, you know, pretty high up in those, I'm like, oh, maybe I'm actually okay at this. Just with Jacqueline being from East Lansing, obviously we just always knew about her. So my relationship started pretty early with her you know, just knowing as soon as she got onto the golf scene, just really knowing that she was going to have the potential to be a Spartan and to be on our team. And of course, we always kept our fingers crossed that she'd want to stay in East Lansing and not go somewhere else. But her family is filled with Spartans. And so we just tried to grow that relationship within the NCAA rules over that time period before she got to Michigan State. Your player-coach relationship, that's like one of the biggest you know, parts of being a student athlete, you want to go somewhere that you have like a really good relationship with the coaches. So I'd say that was a huge point in determining where you know, where to go to school. I'd say it was pretty Michigan State all the way. I just wanted her to be happy and go someplace where she would be happy. And in hindsight, we always told her, if you ever got hurt, you want to pick a school that you always want to be at um, and that you'll be happy at, not knowing that this would ever happen to her. We all knew she was tough, but I mean, after going, after seeing her go through what she just went through, she's tougher than I ever thought. After my freshman year, like my, it was weird. I kept telling my parents, like, my body's breaking down, my body's breaking down. I don't know why. And I was really athletic growing up. I never ever got hurt, and then I just started getting hurt all the time. I mean, we just couldn't believe that she was getting so hurt. And then last summer, she, um, what they thought was bursitis. She got another cortisone shot, and then two weeks after that, what they thought was bursitis, um, a lymph node raised and so and swelled, and that's when everything went fast forward. Initially, we went to a general surgeon who's a friend of ours, um, 
And we just wanted to take the lymph node out just because it was enlarged and it hurt. So then he ordered a CAT scan. A CAT scan and then uh, a biopsy. And it was revealed uh, when the biopsy came back that it was Hodgkin's. I was talking to Dr. Covan about what Jack had and what was going on and what the white blood cell count was. You know, we, we were, it, would, it, didn't, it wasn't like a positive thing that, oh, it might just be this lump that developed. She was diagnosed stage two because the lymphoma was from the waist up. She had areas of swollen lymph nodes on both sides of her neck and um, a quite a large mass in her mediastinum, which is in her chest. I was more in shock because I think I'm a late reactor, so I was like more in shock. My mom like reacted right away, and so I'm sure that was like, I don't know, I don't even know what she went through there, but um, like I can't even really imagine like a daughter, but yeah, I don't know. I just kind of react, kind of shut down, and then just, I don't know, it was pretty sad for a while. Everything seems pretty meaningless when your child's life's on the line. It was horrible. Oh, we were devastated. We were, yeah, we were devastated. It was. You know, right away when you hear the C word, you feel like, you know, you think of death, obviously, and, and that's, you know, that's what we thought. I mean, there's so many cancer commercials, and you're always like, oh, whatever. I was like, oh, I'm 21. Like, it's never going to happen to me. Um, honestly, hearing the word, and like, just for me, it's like you feel like it's a death sentence. And I, like, went home and, um, like, was pretty sad for probably a couple of days and then um, lymphoma is pretty treatable so then I just stopped feeling bad for myself and just started like you have to fight it because the other option isn't really the best either so you had I just had to fight it really and get through the get through the treatments. I'd say the most challenging part was honestly like the unknowns like the unknowns of like what chemo is going to be like or what the side effects of chemo are because once you're down and you have it and you have a plan like you're ready to go but the unknowns of everything I mean like that's why you don't sleep at night, at least that's for me. Like I was just so afraid of the unknowns really. Before she got started, they told her, I mean, they had to tell her everything that, the risks that were involved, the side effects that were involved. And um, I think that was probably the first time I've ever seen, saw her really scared. in yourself and strength, strengths in mean yourself and then also among your teammates and then also give individuals a chance to uh, step up into leadership roles even when they're uncomfortable. We really started this back in last November after season ended. The cornerstones of our program are hard work, positive attitude, resiliency and thoughtful presence and after season ended last year we just felt unfulfilled and that there were parts of our cornerstones that we were not completing and so I met with our, our friends here at ROTC and kind of formulated a plan and uh, we worked with them all spring. Um, we had four sessions with uh, Sergeant Yanez and Captain Emmons right. and saw huge growth in the team. Time starts now. Alright, let's go. Oh, go. go. Alright, I got the bike. Sam's on the bike. Here we go, here we go. Guys, one more warning and you're running. It's here a day. Alright guys, we got her. Today we just wanted to do uh, conduct an exercise uh, in assessing individual and team uh, resiliency, teamwork, character, presence, intellect, uh, if they have the ability to lead, develop, uh, achieve throughout the team. You just have to stop. We don't want to sit down because that slows us down a little bit. Just stand and it will help you along the way. So we wanted to put them in a, a pretty stressful environment and see how the current leaders react, how the future leaders react and really just see the informal and formal leaders on the team and how they react to, uh, to stressful environments. 13. All right, guys, we got it. Who is the patio dedicated to? We had to go to multiple spots on campus and find out what a certain patio dedicated to, and um, we had to report back with our answers as a team. Phyllis Spring Petrullo. June versus Does anyone have the last one? 
I think it really helps you get to know who your teammates are and their strengths and weaknesses. Um, different people do well in the physical um, aspects of this. Other people do really well in the mental games. So it really helps you learn about your teammates, how they like to get coached, how to push each other. So it really gets you get to know them on another level. All these numbers right here are going to add up to 38 in all 15 rows. See? When you've been physically exerted and then having to do mathematics or, or an exam, uh, it, it's, a new, it's a new aspect for them because uh, it's hard enough to do it when you're you know, at resting heart rate. Uh, but when you're sweaty and you're thinking about how bad your, you know, your body hurts or how bad, you know, hard you're breathing, it puts a whole different aspect into just answering simple mathematic equations or following uh, simple, simple instructions. Gotta push through up here because this can do it, but you gotta push through up here. Come on, let's go. We had a good meeting with everyone, kind of explaining what was going to be happening and to always stay strong mentally and physically. There's nothing they're going to give us that we can't physically or mentally do. Um, so that was a big thing coming into it, is we already mentally prepared ourselves and our freshmen. And then while we were working out, it's always checking in on everyone, making sure everyone's on the same page. And the minute you start seeing someone push back or hold back, that's when you approach them and let them know you're with them, you're your teammate, you're gonna push them to the end. Troy, you gotta stay up, come on! I learned how far I can really push myself, definitely mentally and most importantly physically. Um, it's a lot of hard work and to know that I have my teammates with me is awesome. So what I saw um, is some positive teamwork. Uh, I saw some people breaking down, but overall I think everybody kind of carried their weight and picked each other up. Uh, and it was a positive thing to see that, and we've been working with them for a while. Uh, so we've seen some of the people that didn't necessarily do that in the past really pick it up and, uh, and push the entire team. I think the big thing for me is just the growth of our returners from spring to now has been has been huge and I think not only ROTC but we did a lot about self-awareness and self and just growth in the, in the off season and they really got to know who they are as, as athletes as people and I think for a lot of, of college students that's something they don't take a lot of time to think about when I translate this into hockey and to what we're trying to do is it just it strengthens our foundation and our pillars and um, if we can come back to this with resiliency and how positive attitude, hard work, thoughtful presence can help you win a game. And that's what it's all about at the end of the day. I've been asking for a dog for 22 years, probably on my Christmas list. It was at the top of my list every year. And yeah, so finally in September of last year I got um, the sweetest girl in the world. Her name is Gigi and she's a white lab and she's just like the sweetest thing. Even when I was like, you know, like struggling with chemo and taking tons of naps and just like exhausted, she'd get me out of bed every morning even if I wasn't feeling good. So she was like, a, she was a huge part. Gigi seemed to have this sense when Jacqueline was down, I mean she would come and curl up right next to Jacqueline or if Jacqueline wasn't feeling well from her chemo and she was, you know, sleeping, Gigi would come and, you know, just lay next to her and uh, I mean I think you know if you ask Jacqueline I think Jacqueline will tell you that she that Gigi really really helped her. Another great thing just about me going through this was just the support that I received from everyone. A friend from Wisconsin she actually created their wristbands. They said set is strong on them so I was able to give those out to people here in the community just anyone honestly anywhere and we gave out over 1200 of them so that was honestly amazing seeing the support there but I know like I know some basketball players wore them, some football players wore them, like almost every athletic team, I know that there was probably someone that wore them. Even on the sidelines, Tom Izzo had his on, so I'd say that's really why I like didn't really give up either, is just because so many people were supporting me throughout the community and even beyond. I'd say that was like a big, big part of it for me. My parents did so much I couldn't even, I don't know, I probably couldn't even explain everything they did, but they always like hosted things for like the team to come over so I could still see the team and like we had cookie decorating parties, or we like painted pumpkins, or just like little things that I would look forward to. Um, that seems like really small now, but like in the, like in it, they were like, I looked forward to them like the whole week just to get better. There were a couple days that, you know, they didn't come because Jacqueline would say, I don't feel good. And I knew she would feel better if they were here. And they told me, if you ever need us, call us. So I did, and they were here. And she was so glad to see them. So I could never repay them. 
our son's married to Nick Saban's daughter. And Jacqueline would get frequent calls from, from Nick. And I just remember one afternoon or one mid-morning, he was driving to, you know, to the stadium for a game and he called her. But, you know, he calls Jacqueline a couple times, you know, a month just to check in on her. Jacqueline's family, uh, the whole set of family is, you know, family to us. I was really, really proud of the way Jacqueline sort of showed a maturity about handling her circumstance and her situation. She had a very positive attitude about it. She looked forward to uh, trying to get better. Uh, a lot of people around her, family and friends, were very, very supportive, which I think she certainly appreciated. Uh, but I think having a positive attitude in these kind of situations are the most important thing. And she's always been that way. And that's one of the things I love most about her. The final round of the Big Ten Women's Golf Championships underway. And Michigan State in position for a second straight team title. I was in the middle of radiation, but I was able to go to Big Tens, and so I was able to see them win. And to just watch them do such amazing things on the golf course, it was just like, oh, it was amazing seeing them win and to see them, you know, go rush on the green and get, you know, their trophy and all of that. I'd say that was that was amazing to see them do that. The big thing for us was that she felt good enough to be there, and I think that was really, really important for us. And you know, then winning something like that is emotional just winning and then having her there it was you know like icing on the cake I guess and and just having her be a part of it and having you know known how hard those players worked for her and and the whole team it was you know the trophy is great the rings are awesome I was so happy to present her with a ring but really you know, what she overcame as a 22 year old young person and what she had to go through I mean she's she is a true champion See, so that was always the motivation to get back. I knew this cancer was treatable, and I knew that it was curable. Um, so I'd say it was just a more of a matter of getting through the treatments. Stop! Holy cow. Mike's in the Oh my god. You guys are the best. Oh my god, I'm going to start crying. I'd say this was always my goal to be back here right now in August. and. You know, be ready to, you know, being ready to go to school again and, you know, seeing friends and going to class, like all the things that I missed. It's like surreal now. This morning I was playing golf with her and I was really, you know, just happy to be out there with her. And, you know, I was just thinking, this is like, this is awesome. And regardless of what happens with her golf this year, it's, we're just thrilled that she is, that she's a survivor now and she's okay. And, you know, and that's something that, that she's going to carry with her for the rest of her life is, you know, being a cancer survivor. It's even, like, weird for me to say that I'm a survivor because, you know, sometimes I don't even feel like I did have cancer. But this is, like, what I've been longing to say. Like, I've been longing to say I'm cancer-free. I've been longing to say that I'm a survivor almost, you know, a year back. That was what, you know, me, my family, my friends, you know, everyone that supported me, that's what everyone was, you know, waiting to hear. So I'd say really to be able to say that I'm a survivor. It's like pretty amazing for me to look back and to see like what I had to go through and everything, but to be a survivor, it was all, really, it's all worth it. Lansing is extremely diverse. You know, we are traditionally an automotive town, but now we have a lot of young people who are here for IT. Uh, we have a, we have one of the biggest insurance industries in the Midwest. Uh, we're a city of an incredible downtown and the new stadium district, which is where the Lugnuts play. So it, it's we are the, the core city in the region and it's it's a lot of fun, uh, a lot of things to do. We're always looking to bridge the gap between Lansing and MSU and show that you can get a different kind of a, a, a nightlife and weekend experience here in Lansing. So this helps to bridge that gap. When, when, when people come in from East Lansing or from outside the region that wouldn't otherwise and they see everything Lansing has to offer, um, it, it helps to it helps for us to grow our city and to show off our city. Oh boy, oh boy! Yeah, so I, I think it, it, it bridges these two communities together. I think you know, Lansing and East Lansing. We tell people it's, it's literally a, a stone's throw away. I mean, it's one road, Michigan Avenue, straight down there that kind of connects this corridor. And uh, you know, you can't think of, of Lansing without thinking of Michigan State. We've had so many cool connections here from them, you know, playing here when they first started to, to where they're at now. And then we have guys in the Hall of Fame that are from Michigan State. So a lot of cool parallels and this kind of brings everything together a little bit between, between Lansing and East Lansing.
A lot of them have played on, uh, you know, in a professional stadium. We play in Detroit and we play in a lot of different really, really beautiful ballparks and pro parks. So that part of it is, is not new to them, but there's still always a, a bit of a, uh, an excitement to it uh, when you get on a field like that. Again, you know, understanding that maybe that is uh, hopefully a preview of things to come. We do talk to them a lot about paying attention to how the lug nuts go about their business and, and the accountability that they take for their game and just kind of watching some of the little things that, that happened during the course of the ball game that maybe we were not quite there yet, uh, but they at the pro level, you know, are, and that's again where, what we're striving to get to. But I think as far as the community is concerned, it's a, it's a chance for, you know, everybody to come out and support both programs. For us, playing in the fall is a highlight and maybe a preview for uh, what's to come for us next spring. And for, uh, for the Lugnuts, uh, they're capping off their season and it's kind of a way for, for them to say thank you to their fans as well. It's just a great atmosphere. It's, it's a highlight of the year for our guys.